Hello, this is Joshua Harper. I am here at Legacy Coffee in Spring Hill, Tennessee, and I am joined with Casey Williams, the Economic Development Coordinator for the City of Spring Hill, and also Alderman Vincent Fuquay. And we just wanted to take a minute to chat about Spring Hill, the future of Spring Hill, and specifically the uh, place branding that is currently happening that a lot of people are talking about. So. I really just wanted to hand this over to them and let them share the vision and the heart behind what is happening with that. So place branding is, is different than um, your regular branding project. Uh, it's really a deep dive into a city or a government or a county or a country or a destination. Um, and you, you immerse yourself in the data surrounding those areas. Um, all of us believe that we know what our city is, but lots of times the data behind it doesn't reflect what we think. Um, and those are the kinds of things that we take a really significant look at. What are our assets? What are the things that are holding us back? What are the things that we should be capitalizing on that we don't even realize are there because we've been here for so long or we're used to it? Um, I've been doing economic development for the city since probably 2014. And when I talk to prospective companies, one of the first things they ask me is, okay, Spring Hill, where is that? After I explain that, and they say, okay, who are you? And that has always been a challenging question. I mean, I can talk all day long about how passionate I am about the city and all of the things I love about it, but that really doesn't explain our identity. And that's what companies are looking for, uh, businesses are looking for is, do they fit? Do we fit them? because it's a significant investment for them to either pick up and move or to start a new location, et cetera. And they wanna make sure that they're being wise with their decisions, totally understandable. So helping to find out what our story is, um, is very important, not only to the business community that's existing here, but any potential business that might come in. And it also should be important to our citizens. You know, the thing that makes up a city is not buildings and roads and housing developments it's the people so so who are these people what walks of life do they come from and that gives us a really clear picture uh, spring hills change a lot over the years and it's not often that cities find themselves in the situation where we can rediscover ourselves lots of times that's painted out for you and you're kind of boxed in um, but one of the key ingredients is that if we don't decide what the narrative is if we don't tell the story the way it should be told someone else will and we won't have control over that. So the messaging is important. And this is gonna be a really great project. Uh, we've been thinking about it for a long time and really believed that now was the right time because of all of the growth that we've been experiencing and we're trying to be more targeted and strategic about it. And we wanna make sure that our messaging is clear. And it also is, is important to look at how people who don't live here view us. Um, when I've asked questions to neighboring cities, you know, fellow colleagues, you know, well, who do you think I am? You know, who, who do you think Spring Hill is? Um, I'm always really shocked by the answers, but beyond that, they're never the same. It's always something different. And while I think that's good, that we can be known for a lot of things, there should be, you know, one predominant thing or a couple predominant things that every time they hear our city's name or meet someone from our city, that pops into their head. It's a very competitive market. And you risk more by not finding that cohesive identity than you do by going into it and actually figuring out what it is. So I'm very glad that we're doing it. Our Economic Development Commission is 100% on board. We just started a new tourism council and they're trying to find their feet um, and, and really explore what's available in our historic tourism um, and also the arts and culture and all of those things that, that give a city its kind of heart and soul that um, we should be capitalizing on and bringing to the foreground so it will help them pave the way for what they're gonna do going forward. So it touches a lot of areas. And yes, at the end of it, we may figure out that the picture on the side of our city trucks or on our business cards is not the right thing and we may change that. I, I don't know, we'll figure that out when we get there. But the main part of the process, the, the guts of it, is the deep dive into canvassing the citizens, stakeholder meetings, talking to business owners, the people that live here, and people in surrounding areas to find out exactly how they really feel and what they see is our future going forward. And if we like that, if we're all on board and how we're gonna get there, or if we're gonna change that and head into a different direction.
Anything to add? You know, I, I think that you make some some good points, and that was very well spoken. Uh, one thing that I'd like to, to add is you said we've been thinking about it a while. It's actually been attempted two or three times um, and, and failed. So with the, the spending of these, these dollars to hire somebody, um, we're, we're really following through this go-round. So I wanted to add that. No, that's great. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, so I think we covered how it practically is going to work. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of um, people hitting the pavement, canvassing, talking, you know, actually hiring this company to come in, to physically come in and just meet with people and find out from our mouths what we think Spring Hill is and what where we see it going. So, um, you know, ever since it was kind of announced, there's been a lot of online maybe misunderstandings about what it is and how people feel about money is being spent in Spring Hill and believing this is about bringing more people into Spring Hill when they feel like we're already heavily populated. Um, but from what I'm hearing you say, that doesn't really sound like what this is about. Is there anything you have to maybe add to that to emphasize? It sounds like it's more about businesses, bringing more businesses in, more jobs. So, um, well, thank you for sharing all that. Um, one of the things that I kind of wanted to talk about was um, some of the uh, online hot topics that come up in Spring Hill a lot. So, um, like roads, what's happening with roads? Um, obviously, I live off duplex, and it's been a lot happening there. But for the most part, it's been great. I mean, they've kept traffic flowing, and we've been able to get around. But what is the future for the roads in Spring Hill 31, the things everyone likes to ask about and, and uh, predict, but does this um, place branding have any effect on how we build the infrastructure of Spring Hill? I believe it does 100%. Um, it, we've already done a comprehensive plan that mapped out a future land use map of where how we think the city is going to develop. Um, into certain innovation areas or downtown dis districts and things like that. And as we are moving forward and people want to rezone property, we look to that map and to that document to figure out if it lines up with the future. Well, that directly reflects to where we need to make road, significant road improvements. Um, arterial roads, where you're going to have the most of your commercial activity, you know, those have to be a priority. But our collector roads, they can't fall short either because that's how we move about the city, those of us that live here you know, and do life here every single day. So it's very important um, to understand the direction and what types of businesses we're going to actively seek out. So that helps us plan our infrastructure better. But on the B side is the place branding effort and, and putting out a clear message that may attract some tourism or may attract some businesses here where people will come in and enjoy that either attraction or that um, park or that uh, specific service business and spend some money while they're here. Um, hit a couple boutiques, grab a coffee, fill up on fuel, grab some dinner on their way home. That directly comes back to us. That's our bread and butter for how we build roads. Um, another facet of that is that the more businesses we become more united with and on the same page with, the more likely they are to partner with us as a government in building our roads. Public-private partnerships are one of the most effective ways to build roads quickly and efficiently. Whenever you uh, put bids out for road projects and it's from a government, you can count on twice the money and three times the time. Um, but if it's done through the private side with the, the city's help or the county's help, whoever may be involved, it can be done on a much more reasonable scale in both money and time. Uh, we have done two, the most two successful that I can think of right now is Reserve Boulevard and then Commonwealth. And that was partnerships between the city and landowners and business owners coming together to get those roads built quickly and efficiently um, and without really strapping taxpayer money any more than it than it already is. Um, we don't always get to do that because we don't own every road in this city. Um, the state roads, we still have to go through their mechanism and they have certain tests and studies and reports and things that they need done and all of that costs money and there's no way of getting around it. 
but at least the construction side of it, the more partnerships we build, the more we'll be able to further that and the more tax dollars we have coming in, that helps as well. And it doesn't have to all be about just getting people to move here. People are moving here already. That's not what we're doing. Yeah. It's trying to figure out what direction we go to in for people who live here to maybe give them another option to not have to commute or for mom to stay home or dad to stay home um, if they so choose because we have affordable housing and, and maybe they can get away from both parents having to work. Um, and, and then being able to find all of the goods and services that they need here is if there's something you need and you, we don't have it here and you have to go to Franklin or somewhere else to get it, they get your tax dollars, not the city of Spring Hill, just because you, you live here. So that's all part of the process. I'm gonna let Vince get into the financial side of it since I'm gonna try to dodge that bullet. <laughs> so speaking specifically on, on roads, that's a huge question for everybody. Board of Mayor and Alderman has recently allocated our, our capital improvement project list, which consists of five, four of which create a loop around the, the city of Spring Hill, which is going to be 31, Buckner, Buckner, and the interchange. Duplex is already in the, wor uh, in the works. So let me speak on that, on place branding and, and kind of that initiative and how it's going to tie into the, these road projects. If you think about that loop that I just mentioned in Spring Hill, one of the things that you're not going to open up is more residential development. Or if we do, it's going to be minuscule. We're going to be opening up uh, economy opportunities, specifically with Alexander Farms in that corridor. You know, so we have a, a capital improvement project list that totals $240 million. Well over 150 of that is solely in road projects. So we're moving forward, but with intent. As we're doing this, these road projects, we're not doing it to open up for more residential developments, but to build our economy. That's good. Um, and even speaking to that, the spending tax dollars here, um, a lot of the businesses that people want to talk about, if we're talking about hot topics, would be one thing, what's happening in the crossings. Um, there seems to be a lot of, of fluctuation, businesses moving out, everyone's speculating about who's moving in and theorizing about why that's taking place. Um, and another one would be like fast food restaurants. Um, you know, why do we need another this or that? Um, but I'm just curious if you have anything to comment about maybe what's happening in, in the crossings, for example, or uh, other businesses that may be coming in. So I understand everybody being worried about what's going on in the crossings, but there's really no cause for worry. The um, tenant leasing representative, and I've keep in touch and have had several conversations about it and um, there were lease long-term leases set in place when the crossings opened and those leases are up for some of those tenants and some of them in their leases their base rate for their lease amount has never fluctuated over time normal leases kind of do that every year two years they go up a few percent and a lot of them were just a, a flat rate so ten years later they're still you know paying a, a rate that was just astronomically low effective at the time but not really what the market bears right now so now you have a new owner who's made an investment in in purchasing the property and um, those leases are up for renewal and that means everything has to be renegotiated now it doesn't necessarily mean that it's all about price per square foot either um, lots of those places were uh, when they came in, they had exclusion clauses. So if, if there was, there couldn't be more than one nail salon or there couldn't be more than one of this type. And so um, the owner may have decided that he didn't want to do exclusion clauses anymore. And so those businesses that have decided to move on have not been able to come to terms in one reason or another uh, with the new leasing option. So that happens. Some of them, it's just time for them to move on. They're cyclical. They stay in a place for a certain amount of years and then they move on. Um, I can't tell you exactly what each one that has announced, you know, that they're leaving, what their reason is, because I'm not privy to that information. It's private owner, it's proprietary, and I totally understand that. Um, I don't know who else is leaving. I won't know until everyone else knows. They're not gonna tell me that, and I understand that as well, nor are they gonna tell me who's coming until they for sure have ink on the dotted line to say who's coming. What he did tell me um, is that our market is incredibly strong, one of the best in the state, and 
there were several people that had been in line waiting for an opportunity to move into the crossings. Um, either if the crossings finished developing around the south side, you know, new buildings or whatnot, um, or if some of the tenants started to change places and, and move on. So there's hopefully going to be some really exciting uh, new things coming. I make sure every time we talk to tell him exactly what the citizens have said they want, you know, and dad gummit, not another mattress store, <laughs> and you know, it's certain things that, that we don't want, that we feel are, you know, we ha we're good in. And he listens very carefully, he takes notes, he understands, but at the end of the day, it's not our decision. It is owned by a private citizen, just like someone who owned property on the side of 31. If they decide they want to sell their land to McDonald's, that is their God-given right. It's capitalism. That's what this is about. If they match the zoning and it's allowed that way, they can make that sale. And there's nothing that sh should we should do to prevent that. That's what our government was designed to do, you know, the, our way of life. And so as far as recruiting goes, since I started working on this with Alderman Zemeck and, and several of the other um, economic development commissioners over the years, there were three fast food, if you want to call them, options that we really wanted. One came straight from the mayor, and you all know what that was. That was Chick-fil-A. We wanted Chick-fil-A, we got him the Chick-fil-A. Um, the other one was, <laughs> was um, a healthier food option, which was the chicken salad chick. Um, we really worked hard on that one, took a while, and they actually have prototyped a new store here that they don't have anywhere else. None of the other ones have a drive through They wanted to try to do it for those of us that are fast-paced and just have a few minutes to grab some lunch, we can still choose a healthier option. So that's one of the reasons we chose them, and, and they were really interested in being in this part of Tennessee. And then Arby's, that discussion had been in line for, goodness, at least four or five years and they'd just been looking at different locations and you know trying to figure out what they were going to do with their store in Columbia if they were going to move it there was just a lot of conversation going on and then um, the new development just north of the crossings it's happening now came online and I connected those two owners together and they came you know to a deal um, personally I love Arby's so I'm happy about that but um, you know that's that's just part of what we do we, we're not out there with a a big sign saying hey you know we're open come on in whoever you are we don't care what we're doing with recruiting is very targeted and very direct um, but we respect landowners rights and we respect what they want to do with with their family's legacy of you know owning land for 30 years in this town or whatever it may be and um, and so we try to work very carefully now one of the things I do enjoy about my job is that I've gotten to know so many of the landowners personally that we're they trust me enough to come and ask me and I'm honest with them brutally sometimes you know I don't know that that's going to be well received or yeah that really does fit there you know um, so so it's it's really great that we now have this open line of communication between our businesses potential businesses and our city leadership city government that we can have these honest conversations now we don't control everything that comes in and out of this town sometimes we don't even know about it there have been several that I was looking at the agenda for the Planning Commission work session and went whoa where did that come from? You know, so we don't know about all of it, but we are trying to at least be part of the conversation for the things that really matter. And um, I think it's important. I'm glad that our city's leadership has decided to be a part of it and be part of the conversation instead of just sitting back and trying to handle the fallout. Well, let's drive instead of hold on to the bumper. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're trying to do. I mean, com completely agree. Um, just to touch note on that, you know, one of the misconceptions online with, with Casey's job and, and my seat on the, the commission is that we are driving everything that comes in and, and we're part of the reasons why we have so many mattresses locations or even the U-Haul facility coming in on 31. We, we don't have a, a part in that. That is, is capitalism and Casey stated it really well. You know, there are things that we would like to go in, in certain locations and, and we can make policy to, to kind of drive it that way. But outside of that, we're really hands tied. Right, and that's great. Um, the, in the end, it comes down to if you don't want to see a fast food restaurant, don't spend your money there. <laughs> and they won't be there anymore. But the fact is they thrive because that's what people want. That's what the reality of the numbers tells us in Spring Hill. But on another note, for those who are wanting to support local businesses, small business owners, 
Legacy Coffee, like here we are today. I mean, there's numerous ones all over the community that people may or may not even be aware of. So part of what I like to do is I want to make people aware of where we're at today and that, you know, I know Josh, he's a great guy. The coffee is amazing. Come to Legacy. I highly recommend it. Um, and many others in town. But if for the people that are wanting to find out more about the small local businesses and who they are, where they are, where would they go for that type of information that you would recommend? Well, our chamber has done a an amazing job at putting this information together. So we've started a website called Experience Spring Hill, um, and we named it after the event that we do every year that gives our, our community an opportunity to meet local business owners one-on-one um, -on -one to learn about the businesses that are in our city. But So we started this website to mirror that. And if you go to experiencespringhill.com, you'll see a whole host of businesses in every category you can imagine that are, that are in Spring Hill, either locally owned or operated, and have chosen to invest in our chamber and be a part of our community. They give back. And so we always promote that. And that doesn't mean that there aren't a whole lot more. Um, we have about 360 members in our chamber, but we've got hundreds and hundreds more business owners and business opportunities in the city. Um, our local business owners or local operators are really in touch with being a part of our community. They want to give back. They want to talk to us and, and, and understand us and try to you know serve us in the best way possible. Um, so I, I always encourage people just to, even though life is busy, just take a minute and look around. Next time you are having to sit on 31, um, squeeze your little squishy stoplight that the mayor gave us and look at the shopping centers around you. See what's changed um, and maybe make an effort to, on the weekend, you know, make a family outing to just kind of get out and about and walk up and down the strip centers or walk around in the crossings. And, and when you go in, nine times out of ten, you're going to run into the owner or the operator there because it's their business. And they love talking to the community. Well, thank you. Casey and Benza for taking the time to talk with us about all the things happening in Spring Hill, all of the growth of infrastructure and local businesses. Um, if you are a local business that would like to be featured, I would love to talk with you. Please reach out and together we can build Spring Hill.